This video revisits a previous Tesla Powerwall 2 video I uploaded in December 2020, where I made an error in my payback calculations. Plus, I'll cover a few additional points that I didn't mention in that previous video. And also, I'll give you a big picture view of our total costs and savings over the past 10 years with solar, three and a half years of our Tesla Powerwall, and just shy of three years with our EV ownership. So stay tuned. <laughs> Hi, John here. In the previous video I uploaded in December 2020, a two-year review of the Powerwall, <laughs> I made a, an error in my maths. Normally, I'd not worry too much about that, as typically only a few people would see it. However, for some reason, the original video has gone viral in the past few weeks. Well, viral for my channel anyway. And as I record this, that original video has had 185,000 views and now is my most viewed video on the channel. I'm sure memes will soon start to circulate to commemorate this momentous occasion. What was the correction? Firstly, when I was working out the costings, I multiplied the then two years of ownership by 48 rather than 24 months. As a result, this reduced my savings by half. So th thank you to all of you who pointed that out. As it became so popular, more and more people pointed this mistake out, so I thought I'd address it in this video. I will revisit the cost savings as we now have three years of data and it's a much rosier picture. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm already 50% up due to my maths error. Secondly, a few of you pointed out that I had not included any savings from using the power wall to charge the EVs rather than spending money buying fuel for an internal combustion engine car. Good point. So that's now included along with solar savings for charging the cars. Thirdly, some people commented that I would not include the cost of the solar PV in my calculation in that video. And I wanted to explain my reasoning for not including it. Our four kilowatt array installed in September 2011 has a feed-in tariff. We get quarterly payments from our energy company for every kilowatt hour of solar power we generate. 50% of that generation total is also taken as deemed export and we get a payment for that too incorporated into our overall FIT payments. Over the past 10 years, our average annual FIT feed-in tariff payment, or FIT payment for short, has been £2,239.23. To date, we've received a total of £22,681.76 in FIT payments. This means our 2011 4 kilowatt solar installation costs were covered in December 2018 just from FIT payments. This break-even point was at the same time we had the Powerwall installed, and this is the reason I didn't include the costs of the solar PV in my initial video. I should have explained that at the time. Obviously, if I had included the solar costs, I'd be costing it twice. And we don't want to go down that doubling up costings route again, do we? Oh, and the FIT payments don't take into account savings we made from reducing our electricity bills by having solar panels. But more on that later. At this point, it's a good time to tell you about all the components and costs in our total system to date. That's everything we had bolted onto the house, and that gives you a good starting point. So our four kilowatt array with a 3.8 inverter installed in September 2011 cost 15,225 pounds. The Tesla Powerwall 2 and the My Energy Zappi installed in December 2018 cost 7,141 pounds 66 pence. My Energy Eddy Harvey and Comms Hub installed in July 2019 cost 445 pounds 83 pence. Our 2.34 kilowatt array with a 2.2 inverter installed in October 2019 was 5,795 pounds. That is a total of 28,607 pounds and 49 pence. Our overall total fit payments to date the time of recording this video in April 2022 are £22,681.76, which leaves us in deficit by £5,925.73. 
Based on our annual average FIT payments, we will break even in 2.6 years just from our FIT payments alone. And again, this doesn't factor in any other savings we made along the way. Our plan has always been that the FIT payments we receive are ploughed back into improving the efficiency of our house. We want to reduce our reliance on gas um, and electricity from the grid. And one of the best ways to achieve this is to reduce our heat loss by insulating and reducing drafts. The cheapest energy is the energy that you don't use. And that's what we've been doing and it's very much work in progress. Uh, if you've not seen any of those videos that we've done so far, I'll put a link to the video up in the top corner here, also in the description down below. So overall savings, let's have a look at that. I'll start off with the Powerwall 2 data and how much we've saved over three years of ownership here in the UK with the Powerwall 2. Then we'll look at the savings we've generated from our solar panels, our Eddy, which heats our hot water, and the Zappi, which charges our EVs either from solar or at cheap off-peak rates. The Tesla Powerwall was installed and commissioned on the 4th of December 2018. It has had only three days offline in its lifetime. Those three consecutive days were just after the installation and it was fixed remotely by Tesla. Since then, it's been working without any glitches. And the cutoff point for this data when I collected it was the 4th of April 2022, which is 1,217 days, three years and three months. Now, when you have a home storage battery, there are a number of ways it can be used. I'm calculating the costs based on how we use it. Other people on different energy tariffs will have different outcomes. So for example, if you're on the, the TEP plan, the Tesla Energy plan with Octopus Energy, then the savings and outcome will be completely different compared to mine. If you are on the Octopus Agile tariff and take advantage of Agile export rates, then again, your outcomes will be different from mine. And I guess it's important to make this distinction comparing apples with apples if you are looking at other people's costs and savings with their home storage battery and or solar. And I'm not inferring that my way is the right way and theirs is wrong, you know, far from it. How someone uses their energy whilst maintaining their savings and reducing their costs will be different from household to household. In the last video, I used the amortized costs of the power wall. So 6,808 pounds divided by 120 months, 10 years, equals 57 pounds a month. This time though, I've included the total cost of the installation and that was included in the 28,000 total I mentioned earlier. Tesla have actually added a new feature to the app, which allows you to plug in your energy tariff rates and set your peak and off peak costs, as well as any monetary values for any export. This then calculates the savings based on how much solar and the battery has saved. This is great, although it's not 100% accurate, in as much as it assumes you've been on the same tariff since the installation, but hey, it's better than nothing. So in the app, I've used a super off peak for our peak, for our cheap five hour um, off peak period at 5.5 pence per unit or per kilowatt hour. And the rest of the day is peak at 15.33 pence. I've set export to zero as we don't get paid anything when we export to the grid. If you remember the deemed export I spoke about earlier is part of our FIT payments. 50% of what we generate we get paid as export regardless to how much we do or don't export. Our deemed export payment is about £150 a year so it's not um, big bucks as it were. So this is our Powerwall's lifetime stats right back to the 4th of December 2018. So our lifetime self power is broken down by 29% from solar and 27% from the power wall, which means we have not used electricity from the grid for 56% of our home's energy over that period of time. The value energy saving, according to the app, is £2,743 based on our current tariff. The energy value is an estimate of the money we didn't have to pay our energy supplier, so savings. We had uh, solar installed since the 8th of September 2011, which means there's an additional seven years of savings to add into our calculations. The energy value saving we just looked at only goes back to when the power was installed in December 2018. Seven years of solar generation, that means up until the power was installed, we had generated a 30,000 
262.5 units. This again is energy savings, energy that we have not had to buy. If we calculate that at our current rate of 15 pence per unit, so 30,262.5 units times 15p comes out at 4,537 pounds 95 pence worth of savings. And just a point on the current value I've used, it's, it's, it's difficult to accurately calculate our historical energy costs over the past 10 years. In the past three years, we've changed energy suppliers, we've changed between three different energy tariffs and pricing methodologies with our current supplier, Octopus Energy, and all of these factors make getting a baseline saving costing quite difficult. A newer 2.34 array, solar array, was installed in October 2019 and that's generated 5.84 megawatt hours and that will be included in the cost savings shown in the Tesla Powerwall app that we've just looked at. The eddy, which heats our hot water, which we now use rather than using gas to heat our hot water. When there's excess solar, it heats the water for free. Otherwise, we schedule it to heat our hot water for an hour each day during off-peak, which is at the 5.5 pence per unit. Savings to date from installation in July 2019, £61.67, 60, purely from solar, um, or solar diverted to heat our water. The Zappi, like the Eddy, can divert excess solar, this time into the EVs. Since installation on the 4th of December 2018, the, the Zappi has diverted 3,090 units of free electricity into the cars. That works out at 3,090 unit times 15 pence, 463 pounds and 50 pence. I've also calculated the savings from not having to purchase petrol. Looked at the mileage on each of the cars, so the Tesla has covered 18,484 miles. The Kona, before we sold it, had 13,715. The Renault, we've done 1,066 miles. That brings a total of 33,265. So uh, 40 miles per gallon in a combustion engine, we would have used 831 gallons um, or 3,780 litres. At £1.56 a litre, that would have cost us £5,897.80 to travel those 33,000 miles. What about future savings? Will they increase? If we look at the trend since 2010, the UK variable tariff energy prices, as you can see, there's been a slow gradual increase <laughs> until we reach 2022, where we see a massive 32% increase in unit costs for electricity. The current tariff um, that we're on um, will end at the beginning of August 2022, and that's just before the next price cap review in October, where energy prices will almost certainly be going up again. So I think this answers the question, will we see better savings going forward? Absolutely, we will. Let's have a look at the numbers then, shall we? So total cost of installation, as we looked at earlier, was £28,607.49. Savings to date, so FIT payments, £22,681.76. Solar, pre the Powerwall installation, saving of £4,537.95. Tesla Powerwall and solar savings since installation is £2,753. Eddy for the hot water was £61.67. Zappi car charging was £763.50. Petrol savings were £5,921.96. Brings a total of £36,419.84 which puts us in the black by £7,812.35, which is good, happy with that. With the recent events going on in the world at the time of recording this video in April 2022, the instability that's been caused in the energy markets along with the pressures on fossil fuel prices, it's very interesting to see how many people are researching solar and home storage batteries. 
Just have a look at the numbers of UK-based searches in Google after the, over the past 12 months for the following search terms. Um, so what have we got? Solar PV. You can see that spike there um, from early 2022 and it's a, a gradual increase certainly um, you know beginning of February onwards it's it's really peaked up to a hundred percent and the interest over time um, axes there these numbers represents the, the search interest relative to the highest point on the chart for a given regional time so UK over 12 months in our case the value of 100 is the peak popularity of the term. Value of 50 means the term is half as popular. Score of zero means there wasn't enough data for this search term. So that's um, solar. Uh, what have we got there? Solar panels. Solar battery storage. Battery storage. Ripple Energy, which is the uh, windmill that I've uh, co-opted into. Phenomenal spike in interest in recent, weeks, in recent weeks across all these terms. And that can only mean one thing, that more and people are realising and researching um, and understanding or wanting to understand, you know, is generating and storing your own energy at home a good thing? And yeah, absolutely it is. Um, so is it worth it? Yes, it is. Um, if you can generate at home, it's more efficient and it gives you a sense of um, energy security. So you're um, buffered a bit by market forces which are outside of your control. If we were starting from scratch today, no fit payments, and thinking about adding solar and a battery storage to our home, we would still make that investment. But, you know, what are your thoughts? Do you think rooftop solar and home storage batteries are a good idea or are they just greenwashing? Dive down to, to the comments, leave your opinions and let's have a discussion. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.